Hey, I'm KB Maria, and if it's your first time here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. So for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all a few tips about traveling to Cuba. I went to Cuba in February 2018, and if you haven't seen my vlog, I will put a link to it in the description box. I was asked some questions there, some questions on Instagram, some questions from friends and family about how did we travel, where did we stay, things to do, etc. So I wanted to put all of that information in one central location. Now, some things that I'm sharing I had heard some things I didn't know until I got there, which I had knew before I got there, but luckily for you, I'm gonna tell you now. So let's start off with before you get to Cuba. What do you need in order to get there? So of course, you need to book your flight and you need a passport. You also need a visa. If you're a US citizen traveling to Cuba, you must have a visa. How do you get a visa? I booked my flight through Delta. When I went in the day of my flight to check in, I had to go to the counter and speak to the agent. And this is before you get through security. So like when you walk into the airport, um, I was able to pay for my visa, which was $50. And that cost does vary depending on which airline you fly with. You should budget, I would say 50 to $100 for your visa. So I paid the $50, I was given a receipt, and then I was able to take that receipt to the gate agent. And when I got to the gate agent, I gave her the receipt, they gave me the forms to fill out. And then on those forms, you do have to check a box for your reason as to why you're going to Cuba. Because if you didn't know, you can't just go to Cuba like on vacation. You can't just be a tourist. You have to have some legal reason within that visa, the scope of those boxes as to why you're going. So I traveled with three other friends who came from another city. I believe they all put people to people, which kind of means like you're going to provide toiletries or, um, uh, just give things back to the people of Cuba. I think I put down, I'm not exactly sure what it was referred to as, but it was something along the lines of like, like learning about the Cuban people. Don't quote me on that guys. I don't exactly remember what it was. I don't remember if I put that or journalism, but I don't think you should put journalism because you can be asked if you have a journalism visa and I didn't have one of those. So I don't know if I put journalism or not, but put people to people, I guess, if you know, you want to. Do what you want to do, girl. I ain't trying to get you arrested. Do what you want to do. Let's talk about money. Before we went to Cuba, we made sure to exchange our U.S. dollars for euros. Why do we do this? Because if you get to Cuba with U.S. dollars and you try to exchange them for Cuban dollars, you're going to be charged like a 10 to 12% exchange rate and you're going to lose a lot of value on your dollar. So I would highly recommend that you call your bank, set an amount of how much U.S. dollars you want to take to Cuba and let your bank know, can I can I request this much money in euros ahead of time? I wouldn't say you just walk straight into the bank because they may not have euros on hand, so call before you do that. And what we decided to do was take 500 U.S. dollars to Cuba. We stayed four, four and a half days and like four nights or something like that. We decided to bring about $100 a day. However, we kind of knew ahead of time some of the things we wanted to do and what they cost. So that's why we budgeted for that much money per day. Um, we took our euros to the little booth at the airport and they gave us CUC back. Um, and CUC, I want to say it's about one CUC to one US dollars, give or take. It just made it a little bit easier for us to understand what money we were spending and how much we should have gotten back, etc. So that's what we did as far as money is concerned. I would recommend you exchange your money at the airport because you don't want to try to catch a cab and you don't have any money to pay them. They don't accept US dollars there. And you also cannot have debit cards. Um, there are no machines in Cuba to take your debit cards. So just leave it at home, girl. You, you ain't gonna need it. I mean, unless you want to take one for like being in the airport, but as far as using it in Cuba, it's not gonna work. You have to have cash. Where do we stay? So during our trip, we stayed in an Airbnb. We just found an area that was close to the locations we wanted to be able to walk to. Airbnb is really good. They have like a map on there that shows you like generally where the house is because of course they don't give you the address until you book it, but they kind of show you generally where it's located. So that's what we use to determine where we would stay. Our Airbnb was air conditioned. Our host spoke um, English. We had the Airbnb to ourselves. We did not have like a family living there with us. It was just um, the four of us. It was a two bedroom, two bath. So two to a room, two to a bathroom. And it was really nice. Like it was very updated. Um, generally a great location. The only thing that I had a complaint about was the bathroom in my room. Um, it had a really um, funky smell, but that's probably due to the sewage system in Cuba. Our Airbnb ran off of like, I think a water tank, like the whole building used a water tank. So we had to be mindful of how much hot water we were using and not to be wasteful. Um, so that was one thing to keep in mind. But otherwise, we just booked our place to stay through an Airbnb. I will put a link to our Airbnb down below if you're interested. Let's talk about Wi-Fi. So when you get to Cuba, just know that the Wi-Fi is few and far between. Yes, there are Wi-Fi cards that you can buy for like 
$1.50 CUC, so it's really not that expensive. Um, however, you can't use the Wi-Fi like how we use it here. Like the internet is not high speed. I don't even think we could download apps on our phones. So because of that, I have three apps that I'm going to recommend you all download before you get there. And those three apps are Triposo, Google Translate, and Maps.me. Just an FYI, when you download Google Translate, don't forget to download the language you need, okay? Because I just downloaded the app, didn't download the Spanish language, so I'm in Cuba trying to use it to communicate, and I didn't download the Spanish part, so I can't even, I couldn't even use it. So if you don't speak Spanish, I recommend using Google Translate or something of that nature. Luckily, one of my friends who was with us lived in Spain for a short amount of time, so she was able to communicate. She's a, she can speak Spanish conversationally. Honey, I was in the back like, I don't know what, I, I took Spanish for how many years, and I, it's just so bad. Like, I could, like, I could understand some phrases that people were saying, but as far as me communicating, asking questions, directions, it was really hard because most people that we encountered did not speak a lot of English. I mean, perhaps in restaurants they did, and um, I guess places that tourists would visit, but just walking along the streets, like in Old Havana and in the town, girl, can you ask him to, can you ask him something for me? For the other two apps, um, Triposo, it's really great because it has a lot of general information about Cuba, places to go. Um, like I think it has like safety information, hotels that are nearby. If you go within the app and look at it, it is, it is super helpful. So definitely check that out. And for maps.me, it's an offline map service that allows you to trek through Havana without having to use Wi-Fi to get where you're going. So those three apps I would recommend and um, make sure you download them before you get there before you get there. Let's talk about some things to bring to Cuba. I am very happy that I brought water, okay? You do not have to bring water to Cuba. However, water is, um, I don't, it's not scarce, but um, our Airbnb host did tell us, you know, I went down to the market and bought you all water because once we get a shipment of water in, everyone goes down to the market and buys it all. So it's kind of hard to find it like as you're walking the streets. And just FYI, the water does not necessarily taste like the water that we have here. So what I did was when I got to the airport and went through security, I stopped at a little kiosk and bought a bunch of smart water. Of course, it wasn't cheap because it was at the airport. I spent like $600 on bottled water, but I was very thankful to have my water because I had a nice big bottle for every single day of smart water. You're not gonna find smart water in Cuba. If you're particular, about the water you drink or the snacks you like to eat or like certain foods, it might be pretty hard for you to find it. Like one of my friends was looking for a typical grocery store and we really didn't see one. Um, so if you know you like you an M&M or a popcorn kernel, you might wanna pack it in your suitcase and bring it because finding food and snacks is not that easy. Also, bring you some nice, comfortable walking shoes. Now people were saying, you don't need your heels. You don't need your heels, girl. You know I packed me some heels. Ask me that I wear them heels. Okay, I did wear them one night, but did I need them? No, okay, because the feet curled up, okay? Didn't have time for it, didn't need it. Really, even if you're going out for the nightlife, you can wear flat shoes because most people were not like very dressed. It's very casual there. Mostly everyone just looked, you know, like going about their normal days and here I go with a whole, like, girl, where you going? Where you going? But I wanted to get some pictures, so it was all right. But you know, <laughs> it is pretty hot there. I went in February and it was like, 90 degrees so if you're going in the summertime or anytime where it's gonna be like really really hot girl just pack you a bra and some panties because that's probably all you're gonna need because it's gonna be hot girl no i mean put you some clothes on but for real it's gonna be hot don't be don't be bringing a lot of stuff it's hot it's hot one super super important thing is to remember to bring like wipes for like when you use the bathroom because um, you hear people say like bring toilet tissue. So I think I only went to one location that didn't have toilet tissue on hand or like the person was like handed it to you like you had to tip them for it. But for the most part, our Airbnb had toilet tissue and all the restaurants and um, general locations that we went to. I would recommend though just having wipes so that you don't have to carry around like a big thing of toilet tissue because I had like rolls of toilet tissue like it wasn't necessary for me. Um, definitely bring hand sanitizer. Like absolutely bring hand sanitizer just because you're doing a lot of walking, touching doors, touching things, and before you eat, you just wanna have sanitizer. I will say a lot of the restaurants did not have soap in the bathroom, so squirt and get it clean, okay? Bring that sanitizer, girl. And um, just an FYI about the bathrooms generally, no one told me that you couldn't flush toilet tissue down the toilet, okay? Um, didn't know that. You can't put like, any toilet tissue. I mean, not like just sanitary things, but like toilet tissue. So when you go to the bathroom, you have to put your tissue in the trash can. Yeah, girl, I ain't know that. 
now you know. Now I wanted to share with you all a few of my favorite places to visit when you're in Cuba. So we did stay in Old Havana the entire time we were there. If I was to go back, I would absolutely spend like two days in Vinales. We went to Vinales on a day tour. Keep in mind, it's about three, three and a half hours away from Old Havana, um, and that's in a car. So if you're trying to take like a bus or something there, girl, you might as well just spend the night because you're gonna be there all day. But um, we did get one of those old school cars to take us, and he was so nice. He took us out there, stayed the entire day, when we did our tour and then brought us back. Um, but Vinales, I would compare Vinales to kind of like, um, it's kind of like the LA and then Old Havana is kind of like the New York, kind of like more bustling, more people, more city-like. And then Vinales is like more laid back, like, you know, a little slower, but like really cutesy kind of. So Vinales was really, really pretty. We went to this bomb restaurant there. I think it's the top rated restaurant in Vinales on uh, TripAdvisor. I cannot pronounce the name, sis, so I'm going to put it right here because it's long in, in Spanish and I'm, I'm not even gonna butcher it. I'm not even gonna do it. Back in Old Havana, so some of my favorite places to eat. Okay, so let's just talk about this food real, 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 real quick. So the food in Cuba is um, different. It's not the best food I've ever had. And I do think in my vlogs, the food looks really, really good. Like the drinks look really, really good, but it may not translate in flavor. But there were some restaurants that were good. So in Old Havana, O'Reilly 304, that place was really good. Honestly, the best food we had though was at the beach. Um, Veradero, that food? Yum, 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 yum. Like it was seasoned so well and it just was like the freshest tasting. And literally we like ate it on our little beach chairs, like really, you know, not even jazzed up or anything like that. But that food was amazing. I would say that all of us said that that was the best food that we had and we all had something different. And we went to La Guarita to eat. I would say the drinks were better than the food. Otherwise, just, you know, the food is, it's, it's all right. It's okay. It's just a few last minute tips that I wanted to share with you guys. As far as safety is concerned, I feel like Cuba is probably the safest place I have ever been to. Like I literally felt very, very safe in Cuba. So if safety is a concern or a question for you, I'm telling you, Cuba was very safe for me and my friends. We had a really great time. We had no issues as far as that is concerned. Um, also, as far as budgeting your money, please, 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 please budget for taxis. For the most part, we had to take taxis and taking taxis to and from each little place, restaurants, etc. it got pretty expensive. And mind you, it was four of us splitting taxis. So I couldn't imagine how much that would cost like by myself or just with one other person. If you wanna ride in those like old school cars, like the convertibles, if you wanna tour in one of those, like a one hour tour is 50 CUC. If you wanna take pictures in front of those cars, you gotta give them a little tip. I found like five CUC was about the standard. So just make sure you budget enough for other things. As far as cigars are concerned, I bought my cigars when we went to Vinales because we were taken to a tobacco farm and we also went to a hotel. I can't recall the name but I'm going to put it here where we bought the Cohiba cigars. So just be mindful not to buy your cigars like off the street because you may not know if they're authentic or not. I did bring back some rum from the Havana Club. Cuba does have some amazing artwork. So if you're into artwork, like definitely check out the, the artists, they have art galleries, um, they're, they're tourist areas, they have like a whole art center. It's like amazing. I wish that I had budgeted to purchase art because it was beautiful. And they have some off canvas so that you can like roll it up and get a canvas when you get back. So that was, um, that was something I wish I had known beforehand because I definitely would have budgeted for that. Um, but all in all, we had a great time. Um, if you still have questions for me, please leave them down below. And like I said, I'll leave a link to our Airbnb. I'll leave a link to the vlog if you want to check that out. Those are my tips, guys. Hope they were helpful. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.